The M2A1 50 caliber heavy machine gun is a belt-fed, recoil-operated, air-cooled, crew-served machine gun. The machine gun is capable of firing single shot and automatic, is capable of right-hand or left-hand feed. It weighs 128 pounds complete with a tripod. The cyclic rate of fire is 450 to 600 rounds per minute. The effective range for a point target is 1,500 meters and 1,830 meters for an area target. Hey Marines, my name is Sergeant Heitzelman and today I'm going to show you how to properly disassemble and reassemble a M2A1 heavy machine gun. The first thing we have to do before we disassemble uh, an M2A1 is we got to make sure it's clear. In order to make sure it's clear, we have to make sure it's on safe and single. So I'm going to look down, I see the S for safe and my bolt latch release is in the up position making it single shot. At that point, I'm going to grab the retracting slide handle, I'm going to rip it to the rear and maintain positive control the whole time. After that, go ahead, look and grab your cover latch. Once you have control of it, put your head down away, open the cover, then you can just sweep down, sweep across the feed way, and then you have to visually and physically inspect the chamber to face of the bolt. So I stick my finger in the chamber, come back, touch the face of the bolt, there's nothing in there. Now I do what's four fingers of death. I just put my four fingers on the rear side assembly, and I push down the bolt latch release. The reason for that is if you don't put four fingers up here and you get lazy, you could also push the trigger down at the same time the bolt latch release goes. You could. Uh, potentially ND the weapon system that way. So four fingers of death is what we call it. Push the bolt latch release down, ride about halfway, slam it the rest of the way, and you can sound off clear. Now the weapon system is clear, so we can go ahead and we can take the barrel off. Now to take the barrel off, you have to push the bolt to the rear just a little bit. And the reason for that is there's a, there's a spring in here. It's called a barrel locking spring, and it has to have some room to move out in order to take the barrel off. So what you do is you push back in your tracking slide handle, until you see the little square match up with the circle on the side of the receiver here. And all you got to do is grab your barrel carrying handle, flip it in the upward position, release pressure, and you can pull the barrel the whole way off. You can either pull the whole way off or you can put it so it's hanging in the barrel support. Either way, it doesn't matter. But for today's video, we're just going to turn the whole way off. So now that the weapon's cleared and the barrel's off, we can go ahead and we can uh, pull the operating group out. So I'm going to walk back. In order to take this piece off, it's called the back plate. These are the grips and the whole thing right here with the trigger, the bolt after release is called a back plate. At the bottom of the back plate, there's a latch and there's a latch lock. And I have to pull out on the latch lock and I have to pull up on the latch. I can grab the back plate and now I can lift it straight off the gun. Once it's straight off the gun, I'm always gonna set this down with the spades on the ground. I don't wanna damage any of the springs or levers in the back plate. So you can just put that down just like that. <clears throat> Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to disengage the driving spring rod. It's in the, the right side of the receiver here. You just push in and to the left with your thumb and it'll pop right out. After that, I like to pull it out a couple inches so I have a stopping point so my bolt doesn't lock to the rear. In order to take the bolt out, there's a bolt stud that's right here. You have to slide it back and then inside the receiver rails here, there's two cutouts. So you have to match the stud up with the cutouts right there and then you can just go ahead and you can pull your bolt set out. Once you pull this out, you always wanna make sure you know where you have it. So you can either put it on top of the rear side assembly or put it underneath and close the rear side just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. The next thing I have to do in order to physically pull the whole operating group out of the gun is I need to take a punch rod and I need to use the threaded end or the skinny end. And right back here in the back of the receiver, you'll see there's a little silver spot inside the spring. That's the barrel or the uh, buffer body spring lock. So all you need to do is you need to depress that spring. You'll feel it right here. Depress the spring, grab the spring right here, and pull it out. Once you get it started, you can release pressure. Always grab it just by the spring here, because if you grab it by the actual housing right here, it's going to, the operating group's gonna fall apart on you. So just pull it out the whole way, and we're gonna put it down on its left side. The reason for that is, this is called the barrel locking spring, and this is the barrel locking spring lug. So, it, when we took the barrel off, this is that little square that was in the side of the receiver. If we put it down on the other side, we could damage and or break the barrel lock and spring lug. So if you put it down on the left side, it'll always work for you that way. Next thing we're gonna do is this is the cocking lever right here. So we're still using our punch rod at this point. We're gonna sweep the cocking lever back and right in here, there's a cocking lever pin. So all you gotta do is sweep that back. You can punch the cocking lever pin out. And then this big round pin down here is called your accelerator pin. All you gotta do, punch that out as well. Then you can put the punch rod down. After that, you strip the bolt off, 
of the operating group. Put that down over here because this is going to be its own. We're going to have our own workspace for that piece of gear right there. The next thing you do is you're going to separate your barrel extension and your barrel buffer body. So all you need to do is grab the body, separate those two, and this is your barrel extension. That doesn't need any disassembly. You can set that down as it is. The spring that's in here, all you need to do is upend this, pop it out, and that spring will come out. All right, so in order to disassemble the bolt, there's about as many pieces to the bolt as there is to the entire gun that we have sitting over here to my left. So all we're gonna do, the first thing we're gonna do is take the driving spring rod, which is right here, pull it the whole way out of the back and sit it down. The next thing I'm gonna take off is the extractor. So in order to take the extractor off, which is this piece right here, it has to be 90 degrees or perpendicular to the top of the bolt, and you can pull it straight out just like this. After that, you can set that down. The next thing up here, this half circle part is called your bolt switch. That just lifts straight out of the top of the bolt and you can set that down. Now I'm going to pull out my cocking lever. My cocking lever is what I'm gonna be used. Uh, I'm gonna use this as a tool to disassemble some of the pieces of this bolt. So right down in here, it looks like a monkey wrench. That's called your sear stopping pin. If you notice back here at the back of the sear stopping pin, there's like a half moon cut out. All you're gonna do is you're gonna push down with the end of the cocking lever, the flat end, push down and disengage that from the side of the receiver. After we do that, we can rotate our cocking lever back and we're just gonna use this to press down on the sear. This is the sear right here. This flat piece up here and this piece right here. Just gonna push it down until we hear a click. That is the firing pin releasing. We're gonna hold downward pressure. We're gonna take our finger and we're gonna side out the sear slide. This is the sear slide right here. This is the slide right out. After that, I can completely 180 my bolt. It's to the bottom, this is this post on the sear stop and pin, this little piece right here in front of the spring. Again, I'm using my cocking lever as a tool. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna depress that, punch that the whole way out. And that should cause my sear stop and pin to fall out. Now, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap it lightly in the mat and that should cause my sear, which is right here, and my sear spring to come falling out. After that, I can just tilt my bolt to the side, take out my firing pin and my firing pin extension set them down the mat, and now my gun is completely disassembled. Mayfield, you gonna shoot this gun? You gonna let shoot you? I'm telling you something right now. Ain't nobody shooting me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, how was you saying, sit? Just like that. Like that. It, yeah, it ain't gonna be comfortable. No, no, no. Been... Go now. You see, you're gonna pull down. Put your elbow right here in your knee. You pull down, push right. And you got a good some grip there. Pull down, push right. There you go. So the gun's gonna be locked down into position. Now look right. down the sides. Make sure you're aimed in on that. Put the first round by the grasp by the extractor balls. It's gonna take you from condition four to condition three. Okay. Here, click, save, click in there. All right, so we're gonna grab the target now. Rip to the rear, push it forward, bolt release. Push forward. Right. Oh, there you go, just bolt release. All right, now you went from three to two. That's called a half load. 